tell you, Dad, Dad's got a a way of telling that it's been the wettest lambing in 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> that is my great slogan for a drug dealer, isn't it? What's so good about your product? Ugh, it just puns us in. It's so good. <laughs> Word of mouth. I've been Cammy. I've been Iona. And we are both Fed by, by Farmers. farmers. Hello and welcome to the Fed by Farmers podcast with me, Cammy Wilson. And me, Iona Murray. Today we are just going to have a chat. We're just going to have a chat about lambing and I say chat, it's a bit of a therapy session mm-hmm. uh, because it's been pretty rough, to put it mildly. So we'll talk through all that. Before we do that, who do we need to thank, Iona? Crystalix and Animax Trace Your. Yeah, <laughs> Trace Your, it's the way you say it all the time. <laughs> Trace Sure, it's written right there. Trace, sure. <laughs> That's because you can be sure of the trace elements that they get from the bolus. Yep. Clever, isn't it? Yeah, no, it is clever. Yeah. Yeah. And Animax is, you know... What yeah, is ma- anim- maximising your animal. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, thanks so much to them as always for sponsoring the podcast. It, mm-hmm. It's uh, the only reason we can get them out the way we can and we can get the videos edited is with the, the backing from them. So thank you. We're going to chat. You hear a bit more about them later, of course. You always do. You love your VVTs and your your audio pro audio clips. Yeah, the guy's good, good actually. Yeah, I wish really I had good. a voice like him. Could make a Wolverine purr, as they say. <laughs> Who says that? Well, it's actually an Anchorman quote. Oh, okay. Ron Burgundy has a voice that can make a Wolverine purr. Right. Okay. Yeah. Do you get that? No. Wolverine's quite a nasty animal. Right. And why would his voice make it purr? Because it's so smooth and calming. It would. Just make it nice and relaxed. To make it like a wee house kitten. Yeah, okay. Clever, isn't it? Yes. So, uh, let's get into this. I'm going to, I'm quickly going to pour one of my wee Canadian uh, maple drams, uh, because that's how it's been. (laughs) Um, This is my first, this is my first drink of any sort of alcohol, this lambing. Okay, that's a big statement. Yeah, usually, uh, lambing, I'm not, not, I've said in this podcast before, I'm not a big drinker, apart from shearing season, you know, I'll have at least one beer every day, usually two or three. Every day after we finish jobs, mm. the farmer usually brings a beer. It's just a nice social thing to sit down, have a crack, have a beer. Crack means uh, chat, patter. But usually, like when the weather's nice, I'm starting to think it was just in my youth the weather was nice. Like it seems like a, a distant a memory. memory. Yeah, especially right now, I think. Yeah, it's time heals all wounds. We'll forget all about this one mm. day. But usually, a nice sunny day, you would sit and have a beer at lunchtime. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're working as a team. Nice. Yeah, it's you nice. Just, yeah, you just have a beer. Yeah, like. It's just nice to sit down for a second and, and and recoup and go again. But everyone's just been so wet and cold and miserable. It's the last thing you think of. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I don't like beer. No? No. Uh, you're a weird one. <laughs> Do you like beer? Do you actually yeah. like beer? Yeah. Okay. And it's weird because if you're to ask me, like, what is... Like, beer shouldn't taste nice. No. It shouldn't taste nice. But do you think you'd have to train yourself to like the taste of any sort of alcohol? No. You're not? No, because there's things like I would never drink, like I'd never drink vodka. But is that because you've put yourself off it in the past? Yeah, that's PTSD. I think a lot of us have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's teenager drinking at one time and getting alcohol poisoning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, learn learn my, oh, now the smell of it, it's like, oh, Mm -hmm. memories. (laughs) (laughs) And I've got enough PTSD this week without that, but... God, we're off on a wee tangent already, eh? I know, down the I think that's a good thing Tangent's though. good, yeah, it's good just to waffle for a bit. Get ready for a successful turnout and choose Crystalix this grazing season. Spring grass is typically fast growing and lush. However, it can contain high levels of potassium, which reduces magnesium availability. Crystalix cattle HiMag incorporates multiple magnesium sources and is proven through trials at Glasgow University to help maintain normal blood magnesium levels. With 35% sugar and a unique blend of vitamins, minerals and trace elements, Crystalix Cattle High Mag supports optimal performance at turnout. Um, Of course, we've got to mention, thanks uh, Cars Bellington. If you want to look at the Fed by Farmers range, 30 stores all across Scotland, north of England, get into your... uh, Who's our local Cars Bellington? Air. 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 Jamie was in on Friday. Shout to Jamie at uh, Air. She's wanting us down. Oh, she went us down for what a uh, open day thing. Yeah. Need to be. I've said it on the podcast, Jamie. That was for there her. There we go. It'll need to be. It'll need to be after lambing, definitely. Yeah, but yeah, we could we could drop down to cars. They're doing great things for us. So mm-hmm. thanks to them. And of course, you can get it on the website if you want to support this podcast and you like the kind of things that we're doing. The interviews are great. Our chat's not so good. No. I I I'm too much in the interviews. I'm gonna. 
No, can I? Th- you're talking about that com- recent comment, aren't you? The one I sent you about. No, you never sent me it. No, it was the recent comment. Somebody, and they really went in. Oh, because I speak over everyone. Yeah, and, I know, yeah, but, it's like, but you've, you keep saying that you're trying and you are trying. Do you know what I mean? But I, I know. almost text Ashley and asked her to delete it. I thought it's last no, thing he's named to see it this no, day. No, I don't mind. No, I know you don't, comments. but I just feel really right now at Lamin. You don't need anything negative. No, but they were, they, were, they were right, and I had a good friend who critiques every uh, everyone shout out to Jim, who always sends me a, a text just critiquing and mm-hmm. get but you know you need a you need a mate that will just tell, tell you. you exactly yeah and it's in no way there's nothing there's no badness. behind it it's yeah. purely yeah yeah um so yeah he was good and he just said Do you know part of the problem is and he's maybe right is that like i'm gonna he says that i know too much about the subject but i'd rather title it as i think i know uh, about yeah. the subject so when the people are talking about the subject i want to say what i think and and know about it yeah rather than let them speak and mm-hmm. he was saying like the interview we did with brendan Mm-hmm. It was actually one of the best because I didn't know the answers. So I was asking questions. That you actually didn't know the answers that I to. I actually didn't know the answers yeah. to. So I sat and listened. Yep. Okay. Rather than butting in with my opinion mm-hmm. and my my thoughts on it. And um, yeah, he's absolutely right. I'm bad for that. When I listened to it back, like Kate Rowell's podcast, incredible. Yeah, I really. I am shocking at jumping in all the time. And guys, I'm not like up here, me, like, you know, it, I, I, it's constructive. I still think it's a great interview. Yeah, I think it's still one of the best farming podcast interviews that we've done, and mm-hmm. and that is out there. But I am a bit much. It's maybe my personality a bit as well. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think you're being quite hard on yourself. We've, t- we've spoken about this so many times. I'm <laughs> like this all the time. But I don't think you are as much like that. You don't think so? No, I, I don't. Think. I think you have. De- oh, there's definitely been a change. Oh, I'm better. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So, lambing. Lambing. Tell me about it. Um. Well, I tell you, Dad. Dad's got a a way of telling that it's been the wettest lambing in fifty years. Go on. So we've got like a outdoor box out in the far out parks. What's a box? Um, I know, obviously, but like animal people. animal handling pens. Yeah. Um, outside, and so we would use it to bring in sheep that are difficultly lambing or were twinning. And um, do you have the wee um, sheeted fangs? Do you have the wee roofs? No, there's no roof. No right, just put we've, got We've got parrots. We've got parrots that Aye. I've got. A Do you call with. them parrots? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What would you call them? I would just call them wee pens, but. Um... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why that. Because <laughs> it's so obvious. <laughs> oh, we're losing the plot. <laughs> I caught you there, didn't I? Yeah. With a sense of how sensible that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that uh, checks. That makes sense. Yeah, no, but like when I was down in Northumberland, uh, lambing, like I lambed in Northumberland for five, uh, five years, I think, or six years. I didn't know that about you. Yeah, so well, I used to lamb at home, and then the, the lambing in Northumberland was starting the fifteenth of April. Right. Okay. So I'd get I'd get the first turn done at home, and then I'd go and lamb in Northumberland. So when you're saying at home, was that with your dad? With my dad. Where he was a herd. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When he was a shepherd, so I would lamb with him, and then go and actually get paid for lambing somewhere <laughs> else. Uh, and uh, they would call them parrots. Right, okay. But yeah, we would never call them that. And were they, the the ones there, were they like old-fashioned, like built of wood? Yeah, wooden. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's the difference. Someone someone listening to the podcast will know if a yeah. parrot has to be made of wood or not. I wouldn't have thought so. I think it's just what you call... Yeah. It's like the same we, we call we wooden, the wee wooden gates that we made it from, we call them flakes. Oh, I've not heard that. No? No. So like, uh, back at home at would polytunnel and the, the pens would all be wee wooden pens. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and they'd be made with flakes. Which is just a small wooden gate gate type thing, yeah. It's weird, isn't it? And I don't know why it's called a flake. No. I don't even know if that's a Scottish thing. No. Like a parrot obviously can't be a Scottish thing because they use that in Northumberland. Yeah. But yeah, a flake. I don't know if they use a flake, if they call it a flake down there, but I'd be interested to know anyone listening if, if flake is a Scottish word or why we call it a flake. Flake. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. There's a lot of weird things like that. Um, just to go back to... Yes, how your dad the knows. Bus. Yeah. So, um, good tangent there. This, a belter. this is the first year in the 50 years that he has done the lambing there that we've not been able to use the out, outside box. Is that right? Because it's so wet. That so, I, I can believe it. And it, I mean, at the start of lambing, it started off, God, this is the wettest lambing in five years. And then it was it's like gradually oh. increased, and we've now we've hit 50. Yeah, that's that is incredible. And, and I spoke to another farmer who. 
at the day I spoke to him was the 13th of April. We're obviously a bit on from that now, but on the 13th of April, he told me that by his records, he does a lot of arable stuff, so mm. he, and he has a we weather meter and all that stuff. By his records, that by the 13th of April, it was already the wettest April in 10 years. And we're not, we're not even halfway. Yeah. So we could we could very well be on to the wettest April in 50 years. Yeah. It's as we speak just now, I know, I it's know. battering the roof of this. My heart like It's sinks. making me sick inside. Every like, time, aye, I like, I, my gut, honestly, like, actually, yeah, I'm actually, I just don't want to be here to be honest with you because I'm like, your poor lambs. Yeah, but I mean, it's dark outside. It's like, there's, there's yeah. nothing, you just know they're getting battered. I know. Um, Sorry, through just, the night. Just on that, uh, how awful the rain is, my dad got, you know, he got the beta, we got him the beta craft yes. stuff. And it has changed the game for him. He has honestly, like, he keeps going on about it. And I would, like, honestly say to any farmers out there who are still wearing things that they have to change their clothes when they come in because they're soaked through, invest in a good pair of waterproofs. And I know it sounds like such a, like, of course, but dad's 67 and this is the first good pair of waterproofs he's ever had. Like, yeah. and it's literally changed the game for him. The amount of people that are still going about in, in the cheap green waterproofs. That's, like, what, he was, that's what he How was. did that, you told me about that and I said, take a set of them Yeah. Uh -huh. Aye. Yeah. So we sell, I mean, this isn't an ad at no, all. Like, no. um We sell Bettercraft on the Sheep Game website, so sheepgame.co.uk. We sell the Bettercraft gear and, like, I am going home bone dry. Yeah. Bone dry. I mean, it, like, uh, and that's not some nonsense chat. Like, I, no. I have no um, commercial partnership with Bettercraft. No, no, no. We've done a couple of, like, promo codes, but there's no ties. I mean, if there was somebody else brought something else I wanted out, I would switch them, no bother. Yeah, yeah. And, and we will sell Bettercraft, we'll sell uh, Kiowaka, we'll sell Ridgeline. When we open this as a shop, yep. we'll, we'll have everything, Swazi. So we've no Bettercraft or nothing. No. It's just the best jacket I've ever tried, and leggings. It is, like... Yeah, it, well, you know, Dad's Dad said that it has saved him the cost of a buggy because he said he couldn't he, he, he couldn't have got through this lambing so, and yeah. those waterproofs that he had before on the bike. That's amazing. Um, but and I know and see now we all feel so stupid. We're like, how have we let Dad get to sixty seven and not get him a pair of waterproofs that keep yeah. him dry? Like that's mad. Yeah, I know. And, and the, it, the, the big thing is, it's four hundred quid. I think for the set. Is yeah, that right? it's, uh -huh, it's it's expensive. So it's four hundred quid for the leggings mm -hmm. and the jacket. But I mean, I've worn mine. I'm not saying constantly. I don't wear it in the summer. But mm -hmm. you know, that's me. On this is me coming through my second lambing. Yeah. With the same set, they're still a hundred percent. You wear them so many. Hours. If you actually to work, break down how many hours you wear them and what it costs you oh, per hour, it's worth. Oh, I actually saw on um, RSABI they put up a wee thing of like things for your mental health, and one of them was buy a pair of good waterproofs. Is and that I right? actually thought, yeah, like that. That it's is. So true. It's so true. Another one for me was swapping to boots instead of wellies. Yeah. I never wear wellies now. Never. I, I could, I will, I will have a pair of wellies lying somewhere. Mm -hmm. But the only time I wear wellies now is if we go to a pig thing with Landlord and you have to wear their clothes. Right, okay. And they give you cheap wellies to wear. So I said to my dad, because I know that you wear boots and I said to him about it, but he was just saying not if he has to tie them. But I, I wear them all day. So they're literally, but then what if you're coming in the house? I just go in the house with them on. Oh, do you? Right, okay. Or if, like, if it's, uh, you know, if the floor's clean. Yeah. Two bags, two Tesco bags. Just over the top. Aye. One. Yeah, okay. Two Tesco bags. I just, I, you could take them off, but I can't be bored. No, I think, I, I, that's my dad's but, thing. But yeah, but and, I, honestly, I, you can wear them. I had them on 60, we had a big, big day run about in the rain the other day. 16 hours I had them on. Feet bone dry. Mad. Well, I, see, wearing wellies and running about, I would just get athlete's foot and sore feet. Yeah. And, and my feet were constantly wet and cold. What is athlete's foot? It's like, is it like fungus in between your toes? Is that when it's like kind of flaky? No, I don't think it's flaky. It I, I think it's because in between your toes is always moist. So it never fully gets, gets dry. dry. And it gets yeah. like an itchy kind of thing. I, yeah, okay. I, I think it's, I don't know if it's a something to do with heat, like. Yeah, I don't know. You put like a talcum powder spray on it and it sorts it. Oh, I, that st would I still get it in Sheeran se during Sheeran season. Right, okay. Um, even with my good socks on, just because you're sweating so much. Yeah. Your feet are everywhere sweating. Talking about Sheeran, um, I've got a question about Sheeran Hoodie. I see that you're wearing the new Fed by Farmer Sheeran Hoodie. I know, you're just here to punt stuff. <laughs> no, 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 this is actually You're punting better craft. You're punting. <laughs> Crystal X, Animax, Trace Your. Uh, now we're I'm just not telling you I've made deals with all these people I'm, I, just, I'm just getting the money you're on the side. Um, no shearing hoodies why um, do people wear them when they're shearing quite often you would wear them maybe the first two or three sheep 
if it's a cold morning, you'd wear them the first two or three sheep. Right, okay, and then you're taking them off. Yeah, within 10 sheep, you're pretty But the majority of Depends people, how cold it is. But, but yeah. are the majority of people buying a shearing hoodie just to wear when they're when n- nothing to do with shearing? Yeah, of course, because if it was only shearers bought them, you wouldn't see, shearers are unbelievably tight, you would never sell any. Right, okay. It's, yeah, most people that buy them are farmers and people working on farms because they're still but great they just, on the farm. They just want they, a longer back. Yeah, they cover your back. They keep your back warm. Yep, you're bending okay. over, working with sheep or doing anything. Your back's covered. One great thing about a shearing hoodie in the summer as well is because it doesn't have that tight band round, you actually get a bit of air. Right, okay. So although it's covering your back and stopping the wind chill on your back, if you're bent over, it's you're also still... Wee, you're still, you can wear it a bit longer than you can a normal hoodie because it's not okay. keeping all the heat in. Yep. Um, okay, I get that. Yeah. And it was my sister asked me that. Yeah, no, people just, and people like it, they look good, you know, people like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Girls like it covering their, their bum as well, you mm-hmm. know, girls quite like a long back. Yeah. If they're going to be wearing leggings and stuff. Yeah. Say the girls doing the wool and various other jobs on farm. Good, nice to have a longer back. Nice to have a longer back as well, so yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's, anything else you want to punt? Um, that quarter's up you're wearing. It punts itself. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great slogan for a drug dealer, wouldn't it? Mate, why should I... Uh, no, no, no. How do, sell, uh, what's so good about your product? Ugh, it just punts its sale, mate. It's so good. <laughs> Word of mouth. <laughs> Most foragers don't supply sheep and cattle with enough cobalt, copper, iodine and selenium, critical to digestion, immunity, reproduction and growth. When it comes to supplementation, there's a danger of under or oversupply. But when bolusing with Animax Traceshow, you can be sure every animal has enough for up to six months in one single application. Animax, giving what it takes. <laughs> um, no, let's uh, let's talk about this lambing. So the weather's been terrible. Yeah. Obviously. And yeah, I, I suppose a few things. Our first time lambing everything outside. and But the main reason we lambed everything outside is just can't get a shed big enough. I mean, we've got 600 mules to lamb. Mm-hmm. Just not have a shed big enough. Like, no. um, I really... I, I, Next year, hopefully, I'll probably go back to some sort of indoor system for the mules if we can get somewhere worked out. But we definitely need to change the type of... If we were going to proceed to doing them outdoor lambing, and I'm actually really for outdoor lambing. Okay. Massively. Like, you know, people watching the YouTube videos in the sheep game will be thinking, that you know, why are you doing this? You're losing so many lambs. It's such a disaster. It is this year. Mm-hmm. But this year is an exceptional year. Yeah. You know, this is a... Yeah, as we've just spoke about the weather, this is a really exceptional year. So, I think, yeah, next year. I mean, one thing is like our achievement meals to the Texel. Like the lambs are just so bare; they've just no cover at all. Yeah. By that, I mean they've no wool cover. So I mean they're they're coming out bald. They're coming out looking like pure blue faced Lesters. Are they? Yeah, totally bald and and bare and just cannot. That cold rain that you're listening just now, batting off them as soon as they're born, they never even get up and going. No. And then that, so that's the chief eight meal for, for what we're having. Now part of that might be more the tech, that'll be a big part of the chief eight meal. I think they're quite a bare sheep. The other issue we're having is with the scotch meal, there's too many big bags. Mm-hmm. Like I just don't feel you're getting, and maybe again it's you maybe... See, so that's bags of milk. Bags of milk, sorry, yeah. Uh, the others. Um, so, you know, I'm not bashing any breed, you know, I love my scotch meals. You know, I've spoke about that in the podcast mm-hmm. before, maybe for nostalgia, but, you know, I do love them. But I wonder if just, like, you just don't get enough years out of them mm-hmm. now because the bags get so big. I mean, I've not fed any of them. I fed the triplets. Mm-hmm. That's it. The lambs I'm getting are massive. Ewes are heaving my milk. Let's blame Chris Slicks for that because that's the only thing they got was Chris Slicks mm-hmm. and a lot of good ears for grass. Mm-hmm. You know, I dare say it's more the grass than anything else. But like, you know, you're just not getting it. And then these shoes get these big bags. Mm-hmm. The lambs can't get on the teats because mm-hmm. the teats get big as well or the bags are too low and the teats are in the unusual place and it just messes the whole thing up and you're getting hungry lambs mm-hmm. to add to your misery and all your problems. And the lambs, when this weather's like this, they have to get up and soak yeah. fast. They have to. So that is that is impacted us as well. So there's a few things uh, coming into play. And I'm just going to put a thought out here because, you know, I ponder these things. I'm driving around checking the sheep and I think, oh, I might talk about that in the podcast later. But is part of the problem that the mule is getting such a big bag? And we touched on this talking about it, mm-hmm. actually, because you mentioned something to me that I get just lagging for. Mm-hmm. That the blackie is getting too milky. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think I think 
it's part because the mule, the, the blue face Lester has always been milky. Mm -hmm. She's always been big. She's always been soft. Mm -hmm. She's always been prolific. Okay, there's you know, she's they're maybe getting a bit bigger all the time in terms of these big crossing blues and stuff, but the, the pr core traits have been pretty similar. Mm -hmm. But the blackies change quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And a lot of fronts. You know, you still yeah. get you still get your traditional hill. small hill blackie. But a lot of the blackies used for making mule lambs these days are certainly the bigger, probably softer mm -hmm. in by type blackies. Mm -hmm. And are they just too milky? And now we're getting this combo of two big bags coming together, mm -hmm. for want of a better <laughs> phrase, and it's just causing problems. So I did put that to my dad. He said he feels like it's only his older use that he gets the issues with with the big bags. So he doesn't think it's a trait of the blackie. He just thinks it's the getting older. Okay. How are you? Um, what's the sleeping situation for you right now? Uh, on the right-hand side next to Lizzie. Right, okay. What about you? Is that on Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> what a personal bloody question. I sleep downstairs in the spare room. <laughs> <laughs> What's your sleeping still in my mum and dad? <laughs> <laughs> in your own bed tonight, Iona. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't move up an inch when I sleep. I'm a very still sleeper. Like, I'll wake up in the same position I went to sleep in. Honestly? Yeah, yeah, don't That's move strange. a muscle. I know. That's strange. I'm a... I'm a... <laughs> That that for anyone right. watching YouTube, that was like a sudden flinch and a kick. I do a bit of kicking. Oh, do you? Yeah, I lash my leg. I like because oh. I, I have vivid dreams sometimes, so I lash my leg. Um, I don't. I only really snore if I get dehydrated. Interesting. Or a lot of sun. <laughs> well, that'll be the dehydration. Yeah, I suppose the two are the same. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I right. have me snore then sometimes. I don't think it's too bad. Why? You, wh why? How do you know it's the dehydration? It causes a snoring. Well, when I always wake up like a hungover, You're so like a, I like I've maybe had a, maybe we had a, a takeaway or something the night before, and Salty. it's full of salt, and that yeah, that messes me up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those, those, or if you get a bit of heat stroke and you're naturally, you know, dehydrated, like you get in the shear, and that affects me too. So. Right. Okay. Yeah, but Lizzie just lets me go on, mate. She's quite good that way. But no, in terms of actual, I think you mean hours slept. Hours slept. Yes. Pretty solid five five a night. Okay. At the now, but it's it's funny like. The other day I was just ready to collapse, but then... Get a second wind. Well, then I, 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 that night I, I didn't come in and do the vlogs like I've been doing at night, I just because I was yeah. done. And I got seven hours that night because I just went straight in and, and slept. So seven hours at Lamin's incredible. And then I've been back last three nights in a row only five hours, but I feel all right. It's weird. It's like that day I was absolutely crashed. Yeah. But then you listened to your body that day. And you knew, like, because you could have pushed yeah, yourself. Yeah, and in fairness, that was after the really yeah, bad was, day of, So like, stress as well. Yeah, like, we didn't get lunch. Um, we literally just ran about all day putting jackets on lambs. And, but, like, it was shocking. Mm -hmm. It was a real sickness, actually shocking. Just, yeah, just running about. And then you try and get a, a jacket on a, a gimmer's lamb and she buggers off because mm -hmm. you've spooked her. But it's like you cannot not do it or yeah. the lamb will not make it. Yeah, it's like you can't bring them all. You're inside. causing your own hassle. Yeah, so yeah. then you've got yeah. to, the rain's battling off you, and then you've got to pick the lamb up and get it back to the mum. When you've got another twenty lambs to get jackets on, and you've got yow's lamb, and then yeah, it was all just piling up. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I mean, I've got a good team. I've got myself, Lizzie, Marissa, and uh, a chap called Owen all helping. My mum uh, feeds the pet lambs and feeds us, mm -hmm. um, as well as you know, uh, keeping an eye on the wee pens and that at the house. Yep. So we've a great a great team in that regard. And I've got, you know, a couple of big mark that, uh, as a friend that comes out sometimes as well. So we, we have got a good squad because mm -hmm. we're only lambing 600 ewes, like just now. The mm -hmm. other 600 start on the 20th. Mm -hmm. So very soon. But I mean, 600 ewes with four folk shouldn't be challenging at all. Mm -hmm. It's just the weather. Yeah. You know, I thought we'd be overstaffed and I thought, mm -hmm. it'd be, which is far better than being understaffed. Mm -hmm. And that's when where your dad's going wrong. It's like, it's true though. Like it's better to make a bit less money and enjoy lambing than to run about daft and, and not enjoy it is, is my thoughts. I'm not saying he doesn't enjoy it, but like, he stretches himself a lot for a man of his years. He does. And a bit it's I know, I know, and I think it's well like he's been lambing like that for however many years. It's like he's yeah. And it, to be fair though, I would say dad is enjoying lambing. Yeah, like he's I think he's just reached a point again. Of the better craft. Because of oh hundred percent. Sheepgame.co.uk. <laughs> 
<laughs> Great, you're good at this. Yeah, that was seamless. Honestly, that was so smooth. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he's he just like makes the point. He, he doesn't know how many lamins he's got left, you know, and <laughs> <None of us laughs> he just wants do. to like because he knows he'll look back on them with rose tinted glasses. So like oh, he wants do. to live them yeah. like in the moment, like, like well, like last year I thought lambing was a disaster and we're having loads of dead lambs and loads of problems. And then you mark your lambs and get a count up, and you're actually like, yeah, that's all right. Mm-hmm. One big problem. For anyone wondering what happens to the dead lambs, they get put in, they get taken away by the bag. Uh, so you put them in feed bags and they get taken away. One problem with having big meal yows with massive lambs. Oh god! You don't get fill, that many in a bag. bag. <laughs> You're getting absolutely bumped. <gasps> like we should be selling them per you know per lamb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it actually work out cheaper for us because we don't get that many compared to the blackie guys. Mm. We don't get that many in a bag. Yeah. Um, so I think that makes it look worse than it actually is. Yeah, because definitely. The lambs are so bloody big. And it's quite often the big ones that are hung and causing problems, but yeah, the weather just absolutely, it, it did take it as, and definitely the head dropped, uh, yeah, definitely head dropped a bit, just because the fun wasn't there, and I always think lambings should be a fun time, mm-hmm. uh, or have fun moments, you always have bad moments, but, should, yeah. but it was just all bad, you know, yeah. it's just, there's no fun, it's just like, even the now, listening to that rain, just thinking dread of, and, and they've slowed up a bit, you know, we're coming to the end of the first turn, so mm-hmm. we've had a, you know, we're yeah, good, well over two, th- or way over two thirds through it. Like mm-hmm. most things have lambs now, mm-hmm. so it's slowing up a bit. Yep. But it just takes that one to be caught in the rain and get the chill that just scunners you and thinks I this know. is just because of the weather, really. But yeah, no, it's uh, and there's a lot of people we've been speaking to uh, similarly having a, a hellish time of it. I mean, a lot of people having it worse than me. So that's I say one thing to th- be positive about, but. You know, I, I often joke that one thing to make you feel better is one of your other mates having a worse time than you do because <laughs> it gives you perspective. Yeah. You know, you, you think, oh my God, this is terrible. And then I, I speak to some of the other boys and I hear about the losses they're having. Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm like, oh, this is this is me. I've done this wrong. You know, it's my fault. I, I shouldn't be doing it this way. Mm-hmm. And you speak to other boys and they're they're worse than you. Yeah. And you think, okay, it's the yeah. weather. Yeah. It's the weather. It's the thing you can't 100%. control. Um, but you look inward. You look at what you, you, the actions you've taken and how you could have avoided it. Yeah, definitely this year. And and there is things I could have done to avoid. I, mean, I say to avoid it. Like the achievement, the big one to me okay, is the achievement meal to, to it's two bare skin lamb mm-hmm. for outdoors in any kind of cold weather. The big thing I probably could have done is push back to the fifteenth for lambing. Mm-hmm. You know, when I get past she the lamb, everything. But then there's, there's folk knows? lambing early March. Mm-hmm. Great weather. Yeah. Great you weather. can't call it, Cammy. Yeah. Anyway, so that's us having a wee a wee rant about a better. Uh, I've got uh, pet lambs to feed before bed, but yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll push on through this. It's uh, it's always good to have a chat. Hopefully, you guys are all surviving as well. As uh, we touched on RSABI about the waterproofs earlier, of course. Mm-hmm. If you do need to speak to any RSABI is a Scottish version. You've got RABI if you're south of the border. Just phone and chat to a stranger. Or if you want to feel better, phone and chat to somebody that you know is in a colder part of the country than you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, phone somebody in Perth or near Kirk <laughs> and hear how they're doing and it'll actually maybe make you feel better. Uh, unless you live in your Kirk, then I'm very sorry. <laughs> yeah, who do we phone? <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just have to chat to each other. Just amongst ourselves. Yeah, uh, yeah. You can watch your neighbour drive by and that'll be really good for my <laughs> That's an inside joke. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's been good, guys. Listen, we're we'll keeping this one short because I, I do need to go back. Uh, I hope you enjoy the little update. We should definitely do more of these um, impromptu random chats, I think. I know. Nice to actually speak to you. We think about spoken to you for a while. I know. We, we, yeah, we're speaking a lot because we crammed in a lot of podcasts mm-hmm. before Lamin because we knew yeah. we wouldn't be able to sit down with anyone for any length of time. So we'd, we'd, every, every podcast you're hearing throughout Lamin is already recorded. I think we have... Another five sitting, ready to go. So next week, so you had Dan on Tuesday there. Next week is John Andrew, who's Monitor Farm for Ayrshire this year. And just uh, very similar out to your your dad. Yeah, just yeah. Just a, 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 a great guy, just a good chat, good yeah, solid chat about different farming issues in the world. But that's us for this one, eh? Yes. I better get back Wrap to it. Up. Thanks as always to Chris Lex and Animax Trace Shure. Big help to us. And uh, Animax Easy Cal has been popular for twin lamb this lambing. 
really good shout for oral calcium. Okay. But that's enough. Man, how many things to be selling this podcast there? I know, and it really wasn't intentional. I was just raving about things quite a Mugs. lot. <laughs> Anyone watching on YouTube? Fed mug. Fed jumper. Support the podcast. Go on fedbyfarmers.co.uk. Support the podcast. I've been Cami. I've been Iona. And we are both Fed, fed by, by Farmers. farmers.